Hello Year 6 and welcome to Monday's Literacy Lesson. Now for today's lesson you are going to need this comprehension book. Now this was the one that we had delivered in bubble closure and we've still got some text to do from there so we're going to start with this one. So you need this for your Literacy Lesson today. But you also need out of your new pack the one that's called Word Power. Okay so I'm going to go through the reading first. Now the text that we've got today is a poem called If. Okay, so read the poem. It's really useful, especially when you're answering the questions. Down the side, you've got the num a number next to the line. So when you look at the questions, it says things like look at lines one to eight, or look at line twenty, or look. So it really helps you to find which bit of the text that you need to answer the question. So make sure you're using that. Okay, so you've got the poem first. Okay, now your first question then is. Is this poem written in first or second or third person? Now, we often talk about first person. So that's when you say things like I did this or you're talking from your perspective. Third person is where you might say she knocked on the door or he went for lunch or something like that. Now, second person is where you talk to somebody like you. So if you go over the if you go over the street, you'll get to the shop. Yeah, so that will give you a big hint to help you to answer that question. OK, the second question then, copy out the line which tells the reader to be patient. Now remember, patience means that you've got to wait. You've got to not get annoyed or stressed when you're waiting for something. So have a look and see which line you think gives you gives you that information. OK, um, then the other one I wanted to look at is number four. So if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone. Now it asks you to pick a word here that best sums up that line. OK, so it's about forcing yourself to, to carry on um, even long after something's gone. OK, so think about which one of those words means to force yourself to keep going. OK. Um, so this number five says to asking you what a word means. So it says line 25, what do you think the word virtue means? So if you can walk with, sorry, if you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue. Now remember all those strategies that we used before where we use the rest of the sentence or we use the next sentence to help us work it out. If you still can't, remember that you can, you might have a dictionary at home. You can go online and look up, look it up in a dictionary what it means. But remember, when you found the meaning, there might be a couple of meanings. Go back to the poem. Think about what the rest of it says. What do you think it means in that line? OK, the next one is asking you it, the unforgiving minute. Is it a simile, metaphor, personification or onomatopoeia? Now, remember, a simile is where you say something is like something else. So the sky was like a blanket wrapping, wrapping up the stars. A metaphor is where you're saying something is something. So remember, those auxiliary verbs are really important in that one. So the met so for a metaphor, you'd say the sky was a blanket or the sky is a blanket wrapping up the stars rather than saying it's like it, like you would in a simile. Personification is giving it a human quality. OK, so the sky was a luxurious blanket. Um, hugging the stars so by saying you the, the blanket's hugging the stars you're giving it a human quality okay and then your onomatopoeia are words that sound like the noise they make so like crash and bang so what using that information you could work out what that one is okay so the next question is a do you think and you've got to explain your answer in this one because it's two marks okay so do you think it would be easy or difficult to treat triumph and disaster just the same? Now, a triumph, remember, is a victory. It's something that's a win. Um, but, and obviously, a disaster is something awful happening. And in this poem, you're being told to treat those two things exactly the same. So do you think that would be easy? So ask yourself that question and then explain. Then the last one, then, is another do you think one. So it asks you, does if, the poem's called if, give good advice how people should behave? And it asks you to explain your answer. So if your answer is yes, so you might say, yes, 
I think it does give good advice, but you need to then back it up with that phrase that I always say, because it says, okay? So I think it gives good advice because it says this in the poem. Okay? So it's something that you've then picked out of the poem that you that backs up you whether you think it's it does or it doesn't give good advice. Okay. So that is your reading comprehension for today. Now, word power, clue in the title, is all about words in the English language. And this book is to just extend your knowledge a little bit about words. So this, the very first page, and I want you to use page two um, in this one, um, and three. So it's talking about words that have been borrowed from other languages. And some of these might really surprise you. Now, when I looked at it, I was surprised that they'd come from different languages. So the first activity that you've got to do, so this is a bit of an introduction at the top. It, you've got some pairs of words, so like kayak and boat. And you've got to circle which one you think's been taken from another language. So I might look at kayak and boat and think, oh, boat's a much more familiar word to me. So I think that kayak is the one that's borrowed. Okay, so I would circle that one. Don't worry about getting the answer right or wrong. Just have a go because underneath here it says, how did you identify the borrowed words? So what thinking did you have that made you think, oh, actually, I think that one's a borrowed word. It's not a word that I would that I would have originally found in the English language. Um, then the next question asks you how you think borrowed words ended up here, how we learn words from a different language. And then it asks you to look up what some words mean here. Again, you can use a dictionary online to help you look those up and you might have a, a book, a dictionary at home. Um, then these ones here tell you some words in some different languages. So there's some red ones and some green ones from two different languages. And it asks you to see if you can think which language, which word, which English word they have become over time. Okay, so have a look at them and think, oh, that reminds me of this word or this word and have a go. Um, then the, this question, so they're all foods. Why do you think there are no words for these foods in European languages? So have a little think. So have a think. Why might there all that time ago, because they've come across it a lot in the 1500s, a long time ago. Why might in Europe there not have been any words for those? Have a really good think about that. And then it asks you here, what have you learned about borrowed words in English here? So what have you learned from these two pages? So you've got both your reading, which is page 22 and 23, the poem If, and you've got two pages out of your word power today, pages two and three to have a go at today. Okay? Any questions, remember, always email the year six email and we will be the other side to help you.